It's Supernatural Media and Mentoring Studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. In the midst of a Passover celebration by Messianic Jewish recording artist Paul Wilbur, Pastor Stovall of a 15,000 member church had an open vision where he was transported to a heavenly Passover Seder with Jesus and his disciples. What he experienced through this heavenly encounter brought resurrection glory into his church, causing an eruption of miracles. The glory has now spread into the homes of his congregants. Do you want him to pray for this resurrection glory to come on you? Get ready for an impartation of resurrection glory power. Sid Roth and his special guests, Paul Wilbur and Pastor Stovall Weems, will impart to you resurrection glory. Get ready for Pastor Stovall Weems to impart to you the resurrection glory that he experienced during a Passover Seder. And on this program, he will pray for this resurrection glory to come upon you. Plus, Paul Wilbur will be unveiling music from his brand new worship album, Roar from Zion. Get ready for an impartation impartation of resurrection glory power now live the resurrection glory tv event so i i, I i've had uh, my longtime friend paul wilbur that most of you are familiar with and my new friend uh pastor stovall weems and stovall about uh what was it three months before paul I gave a uh, special presentation on uh, Passover, and I think it was also Good Friday, at your church three months before. Uh, what did God tell you? Well, we had a prophetic word for the year that God was going to uh, restore in three months what had been held up for three years. And that was kind of the prophetic word that we had for our church as we entered into uh, a season of prayer and fasting in January. And okay. And Paul, you, you've done these type of services as long as I've known you, where you teach and you, you lead worship, et cetera. Uh, and uh, tell me your remembrance from the time you handed, uh, because uh, within uh, Passover, that's where we get communion from. Uh, and so you, you invited Pastor Williams to come up and you handed him a piece of matzo, what did you observe? So this, the service was going along just fine. This is, um, it used to be a church with great preaching, wonderful praise and worship, and a clock, you know, because there's a certain amount of time that, that uh, experts, whoever they are, tell us that you have to get your message aside or else you lose the focus. Was so, that Acts 29? I don't remember it's, that. It's an, act of, <laughs> it, it's an act of something. Yeah, but, yeah. So I had determined that being asked to, first of all, it was such a privilege to be asked to, to speak on, on that platform. And because it was Good Friday and the first night of Passover, the obvious message is we're going to celebrate communion tonight, but I'm going to show you where it came from and why, how Jesus institutes the new covenant. And I determined that at the point where we come to the afikomen, the, the, the piece of bread and the third cup, the cup of redemption that I would call Pastor Stovall to come forward and help me serve the people now that we understood what we were doing in a better way. So I did that. I called him to the platform at that point, took the afikomen, unwrapped it, and Tell them what they offer Coleman, and they, they may not know that Spanish word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so on a, on a Seder table, on every Seder table around the world, in every Jewish home, there are certain elements, and the bread, the matzah, unleavened bread, which was commanded in Moses, leave in haste, don't put any, you don't have time for this, eat the bread and get out of town. And so <laughs> there are three sheets in uh, something that's called a, a, a matzotash on the table. And at the, an appropriate time, you remove the middle piece. Why the middle piece? Mm. 
You remove the middle <laughs> piece, you break it, and then half of it stays on the table to be part of mm -hmm. the Seder. The other part you wrap in a white linen cloth. It's buried, it's hidden away. It has a new name. It's now not just matzah, it's afikomen. Which and means, by the way, in my family, when we observe Passover, they, they would take that uh, piece of broken matzah and my grandfather would put it under his seat and mm -hmm. he would sit very strong on that because if anyone could get it away from him, he couldn't close the Seder. Mm -hmm. And I could ask for any amount of money I wanted to uh, if I could get it away from him. So you know what a kid is going to do. Mm. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's hidden away, and I, I left it in plain sight, brought it back out, broke it, unwrapped it, broke it, and either I handed this piece to Pastor Stovall or he took it from the table. And as I began to speak the Hebrew blessing over it, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Uh, chant that just for a second. That's not chant. Amen. And as I did that, something very unexpected happened. You pick it up from there. So, uh, so Paul was he was uh, he would read the scripture and and and. Uh, he would say it in Hebrew, and, he, and then he would say it in English. And when he was saying the part, or reading the part about the bread in Hebrew, um, I don't, you know, right after the first word, or even within the first word, I heard another Hebrew voice. He, yeah. he was singing, and you heard someone else. Yeah, he, he wasn't singing, and he was oh, just he was saying reading it, because oh, okay. I don't know Hebrew, so I don't really know what he's saying. And he, he had right. done this at parts in the service, but uh, for, for this part, he started reading again in Hebrew or saying it in Hebrew, and, and, and I heard another Hebrew voice. It was, it was like uh, a voice going from mono to stereo. It was like loud, alive s surround sound. And so, so that's when I was like, that's, that's another voice. That's you know, I'm trying to process what is, what's going on here, you know. Paul, you just recorded a brand new CD out of Israel, um, and I've listened to it. It's, I, I don't think it's released yet nationally. Mm -hmm. It's uh, brand new, and um, I, I'm going to tell you, Paul, you outdid yourself. God was with mm -hmm. you on that project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Roar from Zion, would you go to uh, the music set and I want you to sing the, the, the theme song, Roar from mm -hmm. Zion. Sure, happy to. And uh, so, Pastor, um, this is quite an unusual situation that had happened to you. Have you ever had anything close to that before? No, no, nothing, nothing like that. I mean, I've had experiences in the Holy Spirit and the, and the Holy Spirit was heavy in that service. Uh, and to be honest, I, I wasn't really in a spiritual mood. I was, I was kind of tired. But when I, I heard that Hebrew voice, and as I'm, I'm processing that voice, what, what is that? That's not Paul's voice. That's when the best way I like to describe it is I, I, I felt the personality of Jesus, not, not just the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was his, it was his personality. And... Uh, you, I knew it, like, Jesus is here. This is Jesus. This is this, you know, Jesus is here. I, 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 it was his personality. It was so strong. And then that's when when I, I, I looked to the left, I was kind of afraid to look in one sense, but I, I looked to the left, and then that's when I saw the Lord, and he was standing on the platform. He was, uh, you know, behind Paul, and he was looking out into the, into the congregation, and he, I was, uh, you know, you don't have a schema, you don't have a, a, a place to. You never walked that road before, and no one else maybe. Well, yeah, they, Paul said, I, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. Uh, they had an experience. 
Where were you? you well, it, at, that, at that point, I'm, I'm on the stage and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm like, is that Jesus? Like, you know, it's just very, uh, you're trying to put, is this really happening? Is that Jesus? You know, and then that's when uh, um, it's like the best, I, I, I like to say it is the heavens were open. They were, they were opened. It was like a veil. It was like I was in the heaven, the heavenlies. And that's when Jesus was still there, but it was an entirely different um, setting. And, uh, and, and Jesus was there, and there was a, a, a table, and, uh, and he was there as the high priest, and he was, he was what, what I now know, I'm saying, these, I'm, I'm saying these things because I've had now, I've had, you know, 10 months to process them out with Hebrew scholars and describe where I was mm -hmm. and go to the scriptures and read Hebrews 12. So I'm, I'm saying these things now with a lot of processing um, and, and a whole lot of scholarship and, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so what, where I now believe that I was is you, you, it, right there in Hebrews 12, I was in the heavenly Zion and uh, the church of the firstborn, um, the heavenly host, uh, it was the Lord Jesus himself as, uh, as the high priest. And he was, he was, he was ministering. Um, it wasn't a, I didn't see a Seder service, but he was, there was the table and he was, he was ministering to the heavenly congregation. This and, and it's so changed, Pastor Stovo, uh, that he used to love to teach on covenant before this experience. Uh, but after his heavenly visitation, communion has gone to a whole new level. And that's where the miracles break out. So get your communion elements ready at home for later in the program. Paul Wilbur is going to sing a song called Roar from Zion. But today just happens to be the Jewish feast of Purim. And so we read the book of Esther, and I was reading Esther 7:14, and this is what it says. As the roar erupted from the king's mouth. Now, it's talking about a human king, but I heard it say from the king's mouth, as the roar erupted from the king's mouth, Haman, he's the, he's the evil guy, he, he was ready to execute every little boy, Jewish boy, every little Jewish girl, every little Jewish baby, every Jewish adult, every Jewish grandmother, every Jewish grandfather. Haman was executed. First the roar, and then the execution of judgment. And now, here's Paul with music from his brand new album, Roar from Zion. Come on, stand with me. Let's worship the king. I will thunder from Jerusalem, says the Lord, and I will roar from Zion. Hallelujah. Lion of Judah, roar. Roar from Zion. One nation, one king, people of God say, roar from Zion. From the east, from the west, to worship your holiness. Hmm. Rejoice, all you nations. Hear me, O Israel. Yeshua has triumphed. His kingdom is over all. of hope be now restored the lion of judah is raising his 
Among us, shepherd of righteousness. Yes, he is. He's gathered his people, called them to holiness. His presence returned, the veil has been torn, the glory departed has now been restored. Oh. Nation, one king, people of God say, Roar from Zion, from the east, from the west, to worship your holy hell. Mashiach, Yeshua, my end of Judah, Roar from Zion, the sound of your voice, thunders from Jerusalem. Again from Jerusalem. We'll be right back with more of our Resurrection Glory Live TV event in just one moment. In just one moment, find out how you can get for free Paul Wilbur's brand new audio CD worship album, Roar from Zion, which includes 18 anointed tracks. An unprecedented supernatural door has opened. Large numbers of Jewish people are suddenly accepting Jesus as their Messiah and Lord like never before. They Thought for Themselves is a supernatural book that God gave Sid Roth in a dream. It is written from a Jewish perspective with 10 Jewish people telling their own stories to other Jewish people. The book relates to them and penetrates them in a way nothing else can. Now God has directed Sid Roth to bring this gospel message to 2 million Jewish people in America while the supernatural door remains open. Please call the number on the screen right now and say, yes, Sid, I will join Project 77, adopting seven Jewish people right now to lead them to Messiah. Most unsaved Jewish people don't have a believing family praying for them to come to know Jesus as their Messiah. When you call, you are saying, I will pray for their salvation, and I'm providing each of them a copy of They Thought for Themselves. Your gift of just $77 will provide this powerful book to seven Jewish people, and we will send you the names of your seven Jewish families so you can hold them up in prayer. In addition, we want to send you this beautiful keychain, a replica of the high priest's breastplate, which includes 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Just as the high priest would be reminded by his breastplate to intercede for Israel, we pray that your keychain will remind you to hold up your seven Jewish names in prayer every time you use your keys. Plus, when you call, you will also receive your own copy of the book, They Thought for Themselves. This book will stir your faith to believe God for your own family's salvation. And for a limited time only, we will also send you a free copy of Paul Wilbur's brand new audio CD worship album, Roar from Zion, which includes 18 anointed tracks. gift of $77 or more, you will be helping to fulfill end-time Bible prophecy concerning the salvation of Israel and the Jewish people. You may feel that God is directing you now to reach 77 Jewish households by giving $777. $777 to reach 77 Jewish households is like bringing the gospel to an entire Jewish neighborhood. In Genesis 12, 3, God promises to bless those who bless the Jewish people. What blessing do you need? Family, salvation, health, more glory, finances? The heart of God at this moment is Jewish souls. Catch God's heart and watch His favor increase in your life. We must move while this supernatural door remains open. Each day, Jewish people in America pass into eternity without ever hearing a clear presentation of the gospel. Just as the door has opened supernaturally, it will close just as suddenly. 
police call right now. Call now, use the web, or send your check to the address on the screen. Please specify offer number P77 or log on to SidRoth.org. Now, back to our Resurrection Glory live TV event. You know, it's, it's not a coincidence. Nothing is a coincidence with God. He's got the whole world in his hands. It's not a coincidence that today is Purim, the Jewish feast of Purim, which comes from the book of Esther. And did you know that uh, uh, on, on Purim, one of the greatest deliverance to happen in history for the Jewish people occurred. It was a time when every Jewish person in the kingdom was about ready to be murdered for no good reason, no good reason at all. But you see, the devil's been trying to kill my people for thousands of years because he knows from the seed of the Jew came the Messiah of Israel, which will crush his head. So, I received a prophetic word, and I was told, if I will believe it, I will have this, and I was told, if I share this with you, and you believe it, you will have it. Boy, God is doing miracles, even as I'm talking, Pastor Stowell. Uh, I, I can tell you, this was the word, and it was supposed to occur on Purim. You see why that's such an important feast for us right now. The great deliverance happened for the Jewish people on Purim, and this is what's going to happen to you. The word was, on Purim, there will be a great deliverance in you, in your family, yeah. in, in everything that, you, that the devil has been holding back. How about your health? Has the devil been holding back a healing? How, how about some family members knowing the Messiah? Have, have, have they been blinded? How would you like deliverance in all these areas you've been asking God for? But this is your moment. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Pastor Stovall, you have this encounter where you're hearing a voice, and it's not Paul saying the prayer over the wine. It's Jesus saying the prayer over the wine. Take me from there. So, so, you know, I, I saw him there uh, on the stage, and then I, I like to say that the heavens were open. They were just open, and I was, I was in the heavenly realm with him. And, and being, being next to Jesus, you know, that, that my, 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 the thing I like to talk about the most is, is, is Jesus, because there were, there were a number of, of things... Uh, you know, I've walked with God for 20, 29 years now. And, uh, and so, so there were, it, it's like I, I had known him all along, but there were some things that were very, they were very new. Um, and so the best way I, I can describe it is like, it's, uh, I just like to be careful with this because I'm describing things that w human words don't adequately, uh, there's not adequate language I for. Understand. So that's why I'm kind of talking right. slow and I'm being careful because I like, I need to be careful. Um, so Because you're touching something holy. The, the, the holiest of holiest, yes, yes. And, and so... Next to the Lord, the, the first thing was the overwhelming. Um, it was the, it was fear, but it was pure fear. It was it, there was no condemnation, but it was beyond that. I think of what the Apostle Paul said: "Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade all men." It was a it was a a, a terror, but it was a pure. 
It, was, it didn't have any condemnation, yet at the same time, there was this overwhelming love. I couldn't have been more accepted. I couldn't have been more one. I couldn't have been more known. It, and so the, the, it was all these tensions like that. It were these tensions of total love, total acceptance, yet at the same time, this fear, this awe, of, of this being, the, of Jesus. And then there was his, his personality. That's the word I like, his personality. Like, like, like G, he's a man of action. Um, he was strong. He was, uh, it, the, the, his strength just emanates. Like, like I, I felt like I could headbutt a nuclear bomb. bomb. Like, it, when you're with Jesus, like, it, it, it was he, the strength, but it was this this action, this strength, but totally under control. Um, and and the the I've always related to the Lord is like I'm you know I'm a servant and I am He's God I'm the servant, but the the beyond all words experience with this is how Jesus treated me, how I felt, and and that was the entire kingdom. You know, I, I saw the kingdom. He showed me his covenant. I beheld his glory and the overwhelming, like he treats you as an equal, which is he's God. He's yeah. the savior. He's, but he get treats it. you like an equal, which is like beyond, there's just no words. And then, and then, you know, I could talk about this for hours, but you know, the other thing was like in his presence, like everyone has their place. Like I had my, my place. The place is very. This was a table. Explain that. Well, well, there was a, there was a table. There was a table that was, that was a, a white beyond white, a, like a living white. I'd, I'd rather not. I, I saw the spirits of just men made perfect. There was a council. Uh, the, so l let me, let me say this. So, so when you're, when you're next to Jesus, like you have to bow, like the, the, the weight, like you can't, um, you are, you are bowed and it's like your body. I felt like my body wanted to disintegrate, but yet at the same time, this strength, he was sustaining me. It's, it's these tensions it's these tensions, and and the as as you're bowed like like there like you I, I, you would never just look up and look around. That would be so disrespectful. You're just so glad to have your your place, um, and so so I that was my place, at least for that um, gathering. That was my place, and I it was like everything was here. Like he never, he never looked at me and said, welcome. It like, I couldn't have been any more welcome or known. It was like, I, I, I was known. There was a oneness. And then um, the thing was though, like I was one, but I was, I was different. Okay. So here's this whole other component of this. I was totally one, but I was different. Like, they weren't American. It was, it was kingdom. It was. It was a different kingdom. Hebrewish. It was. I, I, it was. It, it, but I was one, and this is my place. And now the best word that I have to describe how I felt. I felt grafted. I was. I was grafted. I was pos, positioned. I, the the place. He prepares a place for you. I can't. So. It was like I was totally one, but I was d different. And so that, that was a huge component of the mission. And, and by the way, like before this night, Sid, I was like a Gentile of Gentiles. I didn't know Jewish roots. I didn't know the feast. I didn't, I mean, I was always like, you know, pro-Israel, you know, bless mm -hmm. Israel. But I wasn't like this big Jewish roots guy. I, honestly, I didn't even, I didn't think any of that mattered. And, um, and, and so that component of that encounter 
where I'm one, but I'm, I'm different. That, that was a big part of that. And then the Lord's, um, man, it's like heaven's on mission. I mean, the Lord is on mission. Um, he's, he's the He's the high priest and he is the commander of the Lord's armies. It was like the, the, the congregation, the, 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 the heavenly host, the, the congregation of heaven. Every, you, everyone, you feel equal. Like, like, did you feel more, now you felt accepted. You knew the scriptures. You had walked with God. But did you feel a greater acceptance of oh, yes. who you are? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, like, like an invitation Yes, like like there there's no greater love. There's no there's you know nothing can separate us from the love of God. You know I think of all those scriptures now. Like every everything I see in the Bible now I see differently. Like and I think you know we're seated in heavenly places with with Christ Jesus. I, I think it's always like that in the spirit uh, in the in the spirit realm I just don't think you know we're able to experience that in our in our flesh hmm. in our eyes fall uh fleshly uh bodies bodies um and so you know everyone being equal but having different places and 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 positions and then um the 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 missional component like you can sit you could you can sense the Lord's his passion for his bride, his passion uh, to bring the the kingdom, the um, um, the that component was was very very strong. Uh, are, are you saying to me though this was a, t a table and the apostles were there and Jesus was there and this was like a Passover seder? Yeah, well that's that's what. I, yes, after processing that right. for a while. So thank God, you know, like Paul was there that night. So I was just, I was beside myself. And, and when I was first kind of, if you want to say transitioning into the heavenly realm, the, the feelings I, that I experienced, I thought, my, I remember my first thought was before things became clear, I'm back at the Last Supper. Like it felt like the last supper. It felt like the last supper. But when things became clear, I'm like, well, this isn't a dark room. This isn't, this, this is heavenly. And so now the word when Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me, the remembrance up there is like a total reliving. Like a, it's like a re, it's the most visceral remembrance. There's not a, there's not like a, a, a human word. Well, uh, you, you just have, uh, you, you know, just so I understand this. Paul hands the matzah to you. Uh -huh. you, 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 you. You have this encounter. Did you still have the matzah in your hand so, in so, heaven? So, yes. Yeah, so, so all this is going on and, and, and a lot more. And like I'm saying, it's just so... It, Jesus is just everything. <laughs> so it just takes a while to talk about anything besides him and, and, and putting things to, uh, together. But the most, the most personal, like where, where it got very, very personal. So everything was kingdom, all that's happening. But then all of a sudden it was like, it was I know out where I was, but it was like it was just me and the Lord. And I was looking at that bread, and I knew that the Lord had served me that bread. And it was like, it was like he was waiting. He was waiting on me. And I knew if I ate that bread, I knew if I ate that bread, I was telling the Lord that he could go die for my sins. Um... Now, I want to make sure you got what he just said. Of course the Lord died for everyone's sins, but what I'm hearing you say is he died for your sins. That revelation hit y Yes, and like I know mentally, I know he's already died for our sins, but in this encounter, it's like he has, but he, he hasn't done it. It's like you're 
you're going back and then you you know you realize you realize this you realize the the king you just realize the the creator of the universe this this um this being like this uh how he could love you like this and then uh, and then he's you know He's gonna, he's gonna go die for you. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna just, he's gonna die for you. And I, I knew if I ate that bread, he was, I mean, it was the deepest kind of love, loyalty, bond, covenant, family. It was the deepest kind of bond. It was the, it was the deepest. And I knew if I took that bread, I knew. I was telling him, okay, you can go die for my sins now, but in return, I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to lay down my life for you, and I'm going to allow you to live your life through me so we can carry out the Father's mission. You know, it's about the mission, about the, the Father regathering his kids. So that, that was very, uh, you know, that was... Uh, you know, it was, it was traumatic, but in the best kind of way, I, I don't have a word. So it obviously took me a long time. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know about the heavenly pattern. I didn't know about the calendar. I didn't know. I mean, I knew there were scriptures in the Bible, but I, so it. it Most you know, people look at the uh, biblical feasts as uh, almost entertainment uh, and you're telling me it opened up everything to you. Yes, yes. And the, the covenant, I can't explain. It's like, it's like it was on your screen today. I, I saw it on uh, the, the, the show, um, uh, Psalm 25, 14. He showed me his covenant. That's the best way he, he showed it. He showed it to me. So after this encounter, what it's been like, it's like, he, it's like a picture like if you took looked at the puzzle, the top of a box, you know, and you see the picture of the puzzle, and then it's like all the pieces get dumped out on the table, and right. so you're remembering and you're talking to people like Paul that, that understand so much of this. And I'm I'm looking up, I mean, I'm flying places to meet with Hebrew scholars. I'm I'm I'm, you know, there's all these. Prophecy. He, he's trying to process. It was almost you took almost a year to process what had occurred uh, before he felt ready to really release this. Yeah, I knew I knew I had to. I, you know, I, when I finally got, you know, I was up all night with my wife, and you know, I talked to her about it. She's she's really awesome, and um, so we knew I had to share it with the church that Sunday, um, because. It, it was just so, so we, we, I shared what I could and then I really didn't, for, and, that, and that took a, a few uh, sit down, you know, um, talking like this, so she helped. So the uh, church. Yeah, were you a little concerned about, because this is not within the realm of experience of maybe all of the members of your congregation. Yeah, it, it, I did. I thought, you know, we might lose half of our church. Half of you? Well, so why did you? You know, I mean, we built our church. You know, our, our church, when all this happened, the church was doing great. You know, I was, I, I, you know, I was kind of a, I was a church growth guy. I mean, our, our church, I guess by American standards, it's a large church. Did you run it on a clock like oh, a lot of the large churches do? Oh, yeah, I ran it on a clock. Yeah, that was that was another thing about. I, 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 I'll tell you what. Are you ready for restoration, for healing, for miracles for you and your family? Yes. It's actually happening in the homes of Pastor Stobel's members, and he knows when you understand the power in the pattern of these biblical feasts, it will happen for you too. And uh, more with Pastor Stovall in a moment. But first, but here is Paul. Mm -hmm. 
So I know, Sid, this is live TV and you're not supposed to do it, but I can't help it. So yeah, told me that I was going to do this. And yeah. besides that, I'm used to you. How many years have we known each other? Um, I used to read your mail, not supernaturally, but no, it wasn't. physically. <laughs> His job was opening our mail. <laughs> 19, 1981. And I remember you had a, way back then, you had a habit of, uh, it amused you for some reason, you would write down the different ways they spelled my name. You mm -hmm. remember that? <laughs> I do remember. But I, I don't want to lose this moment telling you the names that people called you. Because what, what transpired on that platform that first night of Passover 2018, which was also Good Friday, not only made a huge shift in Pastor Stovall, but it's affected the entire community so that the city of Jacksonville is being transformed. The pastor is meeting together, taking communion, serving the people of the city together. It's a part of the thing. And, and this song that I want to share right now is on this new project. But uh, here, just sitting here, <clears throat> I knew this was going to happen. <clears throat> remembering Jesus said every time you do this remember me but it's not a mental thing this is a re again remembering bringing his family together and so the first line of this song it was written years ago takes on a whole different understanding When, when I say now, you're welcome in this place, and I remember Psalm 22, verse 3, inhabits the praises of his people. Are we ready for this kind of a, you are welcome in this place? The overwhelming goodness, love, favor, presence of the living king, who Peter said must remain in heaven until the time to restore all things, and I believe, Sid, that's what we have entered now. We have now entered not a, not a new season, seasons come and go, but a time, a kairos, that will carry us now until his return, when he thunders from Jerusalem and roars from Zion like never before and takes up that place and invites the nations to come and worship. So... You are welcome in this place Be enthroned upon our praises May our worship rise like incense As we magnify the sun Mighty God of Israel You're the Lamb upon the throne All oh, blessing and honor to our God forevermore, even so, even so, even so, Yeshua come, all creation cries for the returning of our King. Come and take on your throne, Jerusalem. We join our hearts together. We come in one accord. The bond of peace unites us in the spirit of the Lord. Clothe us with salvation in robes of purest white. We're the body of Messiah. We are precious in your sight, even so. 
even so, even so, Lord Jesus, come, oh creation cries for the returning of our King. Come and we'll be right back place. with more of our Resurrection Glory Live TV event in just one moment. In just one moment, find out how you can get for free Paul Wilbur's brand new audio CD worship album, Roar from Zion, which includes 18 anointed tracks. An unprecedented supernatural door has opened. Large numbers of Jewish people are suddenly accepting Jesus as their Messiah and Lord like never before. They Thought for Themselves is a supernatural book that God gave Sid Roth in a dream. It is written from a Jewish perspective with 10 Jewish people telling their own stories to other Jewish people. The book book relates to them and penetrates them in a way nothing else can. Now God has directed Sid Roth to bring this gospel message to 2 million Jewish people in America while the supernatural door remains open. Please call the number on the screen right now and say, yes, Sid, I will join Project 77, adopting seven Jewish people right now to lead them to Messiah. Most unsaved Jewish people don't have a believing family praying for them to come to know Jesus as their Messiah. When you call, you are saying, I will pray for their salvation, and I'm providing each of them a copy of They Thought for Themselves. Your gift of just $77 will provide this powerful book to seven Jewish people, and we will send you the names of your seven Jewish families so you can hold them up in prayer. In addition, we want to send you this beautiful keychain, a replica of the high priest's breastplate, which includes 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Just as the high priest would be reminded by his breastplate to intercede for Israel, we pray that your keychain will remind you to hold up your seven Jewish names in prayer every time you use your keys. Plus, when you call, you will also receive your own copy of the book, They Thought for Themselves. This book will stir your faith to believe God for your own family's salvation. And for a limited time only, we will also send you a free copy of Paul Wilbur's brand new audio CD worship album, Roar from Zion, which includes 18 anointed tracks. gift of $77 or more, you will be helping to fulfill end-time Bible prophecy concerning the salvation of Israel and the Jewish people. You may feel that God is directing you now to reach 77 Jewish households by giving $777. $777 to reach 77 Jewish households is like bringing the gospel to an entire Jewish neighborhood. In Genesis 12, 3, God promises to bless those who bless the Jewish people. What blessing do you need? Family, salvation, health, more glory, finances. The heart of God at this moment is Jewish souls. Catch God's heart and watch His favor increase in your life. We must move while this supernatural door remains open. Each day, Jewish people in America pass into eternity without ever hearing a clear presentation of the gospel. Just as the door has opened supernaturally, it will close just as suddenly. Please call right now. Call now, use the web, or send your check to the address on the screen. Please specify offer number P77 or log on to SidRoth.org. Now, back to our Resurrection Glory live TV event. Woo! I don't know about you, but I have been feeling the presence of God, the manifest presence of His glory on this, this whole show. Uh, Pastor Stovall, you talk about terms like power in the pattern, and now you're in alignment. Uh, explain a little bit about that. So, so you know, one of the things that, that happened uh, that... I mean, the Lord showed me it, it was it was a very humbling experience in the sense I realized that I had been a ruler in a lot of areas uh, instead of being a steward, and uh, I had I had taken 
things that were supposed to be tools and I had substituted, I'd, I'd, I'd um, you know, I'd, I'd taken the Lord's glory. You know, when we rule instead of steward, that's when we take his glory. And um, I, I did it out of ignorance, you know, but it, through all this process, what I realized, I, I felt like I was giving Jesus his church back. And uh, it's just very, um, you know, you realize, you just realize that you were, you were doing things or, 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 or that you weren't authorized to do. And so immediately my, 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 my mindset changed to, okay, I'm a, I'm a steward, Lord. I, like I saw the kingdom. So now that, that prayer, you know, our Father, very important. It's our, our, the, the, I would say the language of, of heaven is always our, we, us. It's, it's we're all family. That's why no matter who's watching uh, today, we're, we're all covenant family and we can all have an encounter with the Lord, and so uh, who art in heaven, he's other, he's holy, uh, hallowed be thy name, holy, so restoring God's name, bringing the honor back to God's name, um, so our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, so, so we're all family, but the Lord has his special place in the family, he has his sacred uh, place in the family. You know, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is, as it is is so the kingdom of heaven you it's the rule and the the realm you can't improve on the kingdom of heaven you can't innovate you can't make it better you can't so immediately my mind was okay the kingdom as it is okay how how do I steward that so and am I am I authorized to substitute this am I am I authorized to um uh there were just so many things, and so so it was. It, it's things like I, I begin to look through a kingdom filter. Now, obviously, it's Friday, which is the Sabbath. It was Friday night. It was also Passover, so it's it's the double Sabbath. But then I begin to. It's almost like I had this kingdom filter, and then I begin to see. Well, wait. Sabbath was way before the Abrahamic covenant. It's back here in Genesis too. Wait, the, 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 the Sabbath was the first day after creation. There's, there's all of God's family, heaven and earth, at the Father's table in Eden. Eden was the bet of the Father's house. Here's the heavenly and earthly family together at his table. Where And he's, you know, that whole language of Shabbat Shalom. This is what it's all about. This is how everything should be. This is wholeness. Yes, you're going to you know, subdue the earth and all that, but n nothing is more important than this. And so I would say I saw these kingdom where the, the Jewish people have carried them in the, in the context of covenant, but I began to see these things like, wait, these are kingdom. These are not just Jewish things. So, so the biblical feasts yes, the, are yeah. the Christian feasts, and yes. the Christian feasts are the biblical feasts. Yes, yes. So am I, am I authorized to not participate in that kingdom pattern? So I'm not authorized to do that. Someone else can do that. I'm not authorized as a steward of the ministry that the Lord has entrusted me with to substitute things that are clearly a kingdom pattern. I'm just not authorized to do that. You, you know, every time you open your mouth, you are unpacking revelation that has been hidden from the church for 2,000 years. But let me remind you, to get your communion elements ready, in our ISN segment, as we take communion together, we will align ourselves with heaven, and heaven will invade our studio or wherever you're watching us. We'll also have more from Paul Wilbur. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more of our Resurrection Glory Live TV event in just one moment. The supernatural of God knows no bounds. And now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN. 
The It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation. But with the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. Now, back to our Resurrection Glory live TV event. Before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners, GB Network, Inspiration TV, and METV, that's Middle East Television. Now, our next live event is May 23rd, and I'm telling you this, I'm expecting to make one of the biggest announcements I've ever made in the history of this ministry, so don't miss it. That's May 23rd. Keep watching for details on ISN. And uh, or you can go to our website, isn.org. Now, remember, this program is not over. You can continue watching on ISN website. I don't want you to miss this powerful communion service with Pastor Paul Wilbur and Pastor Stobel to see this last segment live. If you're not watching on ISN Network or METV, go to the App Store on any smartphone or computer in the world and type in my name, Sid Roth, S-I-D-R-O-T-H, then download the free orange ISN app. ISN, the It's Supernatural Network, is our online 24-7 network that will make you normal. <laughs> That's normal according to the Bible. So get the app or keep watching on ISN or METV, but don't miss this moment with destiny. This is where the miracles are breaking out in his church. This is where a thousand home groups are starting to observe a Shabbat service and uh, having communion. And guess what? The miracles are breaking out in their home. Stay with us as we continue on ISN or METB right after this because I've been feeling the glory in this studio. And when you too do communion, uh, like when you had your heavenly visitation, it's not beyond my imagination that many at home that are taking communion with them, with us on the ISN network, many of them will have encounters that yes. beyond mm -hmm. words. You saw what Pastor Stovall has been doing, so we'll be right back. I told you what God's up to. Can I ask you two gentlemen to share communion with us? Yeah, it'd be a privilege. Just as you feel so inclined. So, um, Paul, can I, can I say yeah. something? Because I, I think, like you said, Sid, it's, it's so important how, you know, if we, if we do this in the right attitude, you know, like Paul talks about in the, in the book of Corinthians, that every time that we do this, you know, in remembrance, there, there really is a heaven and earth encounter. And, uh, and, and it's the Father himself. It's the Father's shalom or wholeness coming into the home, the, the, his table, the sacred space. Uh, and, uh, and 
the like you said, we I think we have over four thousand homes that are now uh, doing uh, the the this in their home. They're doing communion in their home as the priests of the believers. Which the origin in the new according to the New Testament is a Passover is the, seder. Is the, it is was the, the last is supper. The Passover. And the Lord is doing in a moment what we haven't seen done in, in years. Like we, we've seen uh, one woman, uh, terrible cancer, then diabetes, c couldn't uh, worship like, like one, one Shabbat with her family totally healed from 20 years of, of pain. Um, and and, and it, if, you, if you realize that most of the miracles that Jesus did in the New Testament, they were for people that were outside, we could say, the bet of, the, the how, they, were, they were outside the family. So his healing was to bring them back in the family. You know, the, the, I'm convinced that the reason Jewish people's families and the people we we, we've stuck together. Yes, it yes. was so family yep. centered. Now yes. society is pervading everything. But I mean, I mean, I mean now the, the uh, society has has kind of messed up even the Jewish families. I mean, like all families, like even your church families. What's happening with your families when they observe this Shabbat as a yes. family? As a family, so the Lord Himself shows up. Like the the, I, the it's like the Father. I feel like it's so, it's a prophetic act. It's a demonstration that we're, we're going to, one day we're going to come to the Lord's table in the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's a prophetic act that for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's a prophetic act that we're not part of the Babylonian system, but we're part of the Lord's, the, 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 the Lord's house. And so the Lord's just showing up. We've had couples that have been in marriage counseling for years, years, years. No progress. One Shabbat, God shows up. Total restoration, total reconciliation. We, we've had all different types of kids getting off all kind of medicine, kids having, you know, a, a social and anxiety disorders, people getting healed, a whole lot with the kids, nightmares. It's all, it's the, the family. We're able to get, um, uh, si you know, single people together in different ways. But um, this is, this is the thing. It, the, the church, it's the, it's the home, it's the local church, it's the regional church, but that, the, the, and the, the kingdom, but that home, that bet of, that sacred space, like the Lord wants our homes. He wants our families. And if we will invite him in and believe that, that, that the bread of life, he's the bread of life, and we believe that that juice represents the blood that cleanses us from all sin, we receive forgiveness, we forgive one another. It's an encounter. It's a heaven and earth encounter. And I believe it's going to happen here. I believe if, if people will honor it, honor it for what it is and not treat it as a common. This is common. Well, when Pastor Weems, Paul Wilbur, says Shabbat, there are many watching us that don't even uh, understand the term. Well, just in a line, what, is, what does that mean? So we have, there was evening and there was morning the first day. And so on the seventh day, on the seventh evening and morning, God rested from his work and he said, do like I do. So Friday night until Saturday night, 24 hour period from sunset until sunset is the seventh day of the week. It's the Sabbath and it's time to lay down all of our stuff and, and come together to, as a family, to enjoy, to, to allow heaven to put our homes back together. <clears throat> our homes were intended to be an outpost of heaven. Yeah. But we've, we've allowed so much of the culture to invade our homes that we're, we're finding husbands for the first time praying, praying for their wives. For first their wives. time. And I'm talking about staff people. You know, church staff people admitting, I never prayed for my wife. And using the pattern of this celebration 
And rem remember, and we would write, and we wrote. Oh, we we found that that people, you know, they just too they need help. So we reach a ton of lost people, and so even to have a little guide there, and we kind of we to to help the Gentile, you know, we call it Gentile Sabbath, <laughs> Gentile dinner party. You know, we we make it Gentile friendly, uh, and and uh, and I also understand Hebrews four. Jesus is our Sabbath rest. We don't worship the day, we worship the Lord of the day. Mm -hmm. Some people work on that day, there's grace, but you need to find another night or time of the week to get your family at the, the table. But, but the, what were we talking about? The, <laughs> the, 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 this happens all the time. <laughs> the, the, the table and, and the, what God is doing in the homes. Yes, yes. So, okay, so we made the, the, this on our I, I'm totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're, it's like we, we go through it, and here's a prayer that you can read and pray for your wife. Here's affirmation for your kids. We, we give them prayers that they can actually read and pray over one another, and that's just been a huge help. Secular, every secular study will tell you, secular the, the, the deterioration of society is because families can't get around the table uh, anymore to put their phones down to, to, to con and, and so the Lord is just backing it. And I'm just, it might be uncomfortable. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep at it, but man, you're gonna find like that mm -hmm. Sabbath zone and God's gonna show up yeah. and he's gonna, it's like, you know, for me, like I was a Gentile, so I, I mean, I mean, I still am, but I, it, this is like, this is, st I, I can't believe you guys have had this stuff all along, like, like, it's, it, 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 it's. Uh, Look, I have to be candid with you. We Jews, we Messianic Jews, even we Messianic Jews take it for granted compared to your revelation. Paul Wilbur, you and I, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I told Pastor Stovall that since this encounter, what he experienced, he, he, got a, he got a huge download in like 10, 15 minutes. And now, day after week after month, he was with us for the recording um, that you heard just two songs already in, in Jerusalem. And uh, every day, there's like a new revelation that sees, like, that's what, I, I saw that. Now I see what I understand. There's, but, but, but the point I want to make is you and I were raised with this. You and I have talked and celebrated these feasts for decades. Uh -huh. But how has it changed you? The, the revelation, the quality of things that I never saw. I, Pastor Stovall would say, hey, you know, why didn't you tell us about it? <laughs> You've been keeping this all for yourself. I said, you know, why were you doing this? You had a great revelation? I said, no, we did it because we were told to. We did it because it's in the book. We did it because God says this is what you do as a part of the family. And we did a lot of these things without appreciating the fullness. Remember, remember in, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, you know, beautiful setting, thousands of people there. And he makes the statement that... A lot of churchmen bypass, ignore. He said, don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. And, you know, if, if, the, if the, the church world has made one huge misstep in this is to classify everything under the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, as law, everything under the New Testament as grace, and, and all of this stuff gets the baby and the bathwater get thrown out together when that wasn't his intention at all. He, Jesus said, don't think I came to destroy these things, but I, listen to this, I came to bring them to a fullness, a fullness, that Greek word, if you have to have a Greek word, is pleroo, which means to raise something to its highest expression. So when he says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath, he doesn't mean I destroyed it, so pick any day that you like. He said, this is, I am the highest expression of the Sabbath. He is our Sabbath So rest. when we yes. align ourselves with his 
Moedim, his times, his appointments. Sabbath is the very first one. And all of these feasts, he says, these are my appointed times. And he says it over and over and over. In, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, over and over and over, he says, these are my feasts. These are feasts of the Lord. And, and, and the ears of the nations here passed away, done away with. Why? Because that's what we've been taught. But now, experiencing, when you experience the fullness of him, it's like, what in the world was I doing? Uh, I understand my place as a worship leader in a whole, what in the world? You know, it's not the songs. It's, it's preparing a place for him to come and reveal yes. himself yes. to the people. So yes. we, we can all have an encounter with him that changes us and causes us to love him in such a deep way. What, what you said with that, uh, I understand that if I take this, I'm saying to the king, my life is worth your sacrifice. Can, can you feel that? Can you feel that? Could you look in Jesus' eyes and say, all right, I'm accepting this covenant, which means you love me so deeply and you know that I am so lost without you that I am giving you permission. I am telling you, go and suffer and sacrifice your life for me. Can, can you feel that? It's like, who could ever say that? And yet, the overpowering love of God says, please, this is how you can, unless you eat of me and drink of me, you have no part of me. If we want to have a part of him, then we have to receive his sacrifice. He would, his life wasn't taken. He gave it willingly, willingly. He sweat drops of blood saying, you are worth it. And then we say to him, my life is now all of you, all of you. And now live your life through me. Live your life through me. Because he now has come to take up residence in such a divine, supernatural way. It's like whatever you want, Lord. It's nothing's too big. Nothing's too expensive. Nothing's too too important to whatever you want. And he, he wants the, you like the, like the whole, like, what are we, what are we, he, Eden, it's, it's, it's Eden to Eden restored. Yes. So that's the table. That's the family. The purpose is, the purpose of covenant is, is family. Like that's all the father wants. He just, he wants his kids back. Yeah. He wants his kids back. We left the table in Genesis three. We, you know, they, we, the, the people started leaving the his house, his home. He just wants his kids back, and mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. that like these the in it. He, he wants the kid, he wants the family yeah. back, and and our mission when we eat of this table is to satisfy, I hope you can hear this, to satisfy the heart of the father to have his firstborn sons and daughters back at the table. Yeah. Jesus said, I've come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when you take of the table of the king, can we feel his passion, his passion, Bring my sons and bring. the heart of the father longs to be restored to his firstborn. And this has taken on. But you know, Paul, you and I have taught for decades about the one new man. What would happen if first you opened up your home and you go back to these biblical patterns and you start having a dinner together with the whole family mm -hmm. and then God restores the whole family mm -hmm. and then God heals the whole family and then God delivers the whole family and then this whole loving family invites the J Jewish friend mm 
Hello. that God has had, that's the one new man, Hello. that God has had cross his path yeah. and invites him into what we, you, the Bible talks about provoking the Jew to jealousy. Amen. Do you know the greatest way you can provoke the Jew to jealousy? And I might add a Gentile Christian is to have a whole loving family yeah. sold out to the kingdom yeah. and invite that Jewish neighbor, yeah. doctor, accountant, mm -hmm. whatever, into your mishpucha, that's a Hebrew word, into your family, into your family. So I, I want you to come to my Shabbat meet. Shabbat? You're Gentile. What's this? We don't even observe Shabbat. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And they come in, mm -hmm. and the love of God. Pastor, what's happening to the homes of the families in your church? It's just, you know, it's... Uh, the Lord, it's it, the Lord Himself shows up, and and it's the demonstration. So it's it's this demonstration of loyalty, and then the Lord brings His shalom. It's like it's His table, and so He's the guest of honor. He shows up, and and He heals, and He 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 does what only He can do. You know. We can't, you know, we've all been charged with the Great Commission. Well, we have to model what the Great Commission is for. Well, it's for the father getting his family back. It's for family. So, so like in my pre-encounter, I thought that that's modeled in, in the local church, like in the building. Well, they're really the local church is to equip the priesthood of believers for them to function as that in their home. The home is the outpost. Yep. The, that's how we, our light shines in our community. And as you were saying, Sid, now, okay, here's, here's Jewish people. What are y'all, what are you doing? This is Jewish. This mm -hmm. is, you know, why, what? And, and so it's just a, it's a, And then there's the whole component. There, th th there's so many components. Like, like we just How many minutes did you get all these years of download <laughs> in heaven? How many minutes were you there? <laughs> I, I, I'm still mining a lot out. But it's like, it's like this. So let me encourage parents, okay? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? So you have kids that are, you know, they're not serving the Lord or they're not. Li li so think about, think about the Ten Commandments, right? We honor the Lord, okay? It's, we, his name is above our name. It's about his name. All these things are about God. And then it's, okay, uh, you know, honor your, your mother and father. And then it's, it's uh, the Sabbath, or maybe the Sabbath is before honoring your father and mother. It's, it's right there in the They're middle. Same bunch. But watch, <laughs> watch, watch, parents, watch, okay? Do you see that? Everything is about God. God, right? And then all of a sudden it turns to Shabbat and the home, the honoring of the parents. You take out that Sabbath command, get ready for all the rest of those things to show up mm. in a more prevalent way. Mm. Sexual immorality, not telling the truth, not honoring their father and mother. Like that was God's safeguard for the family. And I know as, you know, I, I minister, still do, but the main thing with youth is that they have no voice of affirmation. They're, they're, they're trying to get all these things to get affirmation. Well, lo and behold, God, God had a plan for that over 6,000 years ago. In the home with him there, speaking words of blessing and affirmation over your family. So here's, there is such a a hunger for that? What, what does a single family do if there's not a husband and wife together, mm -hmm. but maybe some children? Can they do this too? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so we have, and we, we've gone from a church that does a whole lot of events. Oh, how about a single person? Absolutely. So oh. they actually, most of them go out and have dinner parties. So they'll, we'll, we'll rent out entire, I know one restaurant, we like, we rent out the entire restaurant and they go there and they hang out and they do, uh, the Shabbat, and it's very uh, festive, and it's, it's very, um, you know, uh, that kind of festive celebration. And clean. 
and clean <laughs> and clean. Mm -hmm. But, but when, important word. Here, parents, here's what's going to happen. This is what I was going to say. So you're going to drag, okay, just listen, one hour, give me one hour, you know, whatever you have to do, get them to the table, okay? Get them to the table, you have a meal, do your best. You know, on our website, there's actually a Shabbat guide that can help you walk them through it. So they're going to be resistant, and, you know, at first they're going to sit around, watch this, all of a sudden, they're just going to start talking, okay? And I can remember the first time Carrie and I, like, one of our kids would start talking but saying things like, yes, yes, and my word, like, elbowing each other, like, <laughs> don't overreact. Like, <laughs> we can't believe it's it. They're like, yeah, they're, like, really <laughs> talking about these issues with friends or personally that we didn't even know about. It's like the Lord guides the conversation mm -hmm. and he just shows up. I can't, I can't explain it. And then sometimes there's miracles. Man, I'm telling you, if people are over at your house when it happens, they are going to get saved. One time we did Shabbat, we were moving. We had 22 people in our house uh, <laughs> doing Shabbat. The movers Oh, my goodness, man. We had people breaking down, crying. We had, I mean, all kind of people, the people receiving the Lord. It, it's just, if you just do it, just do it. Just somehow, whatever you got to do, find some grape juice. Find a half loaf of bread if you can't get the right. Just, just do it, and the Lord shows up. Uh, well, you keep talking about the power in restoring the pattern. And as a matter of fact, there's so much power here that I'm hearing there is someone with a band, it's an invisible band around their wrist. I command that band to be broken asunder in Jesus' name. Carpal it's down. not, your wrist is not going to hurt you anymore. Would you two gentlemen and you at home get your communion elements and you in the studio yes. audience okay. get your communion ele elements and you guys do what you do. Mm. A Jew and Gentile. Mm. Jew That's first. what Paul called the one new man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. Oh, the Lord's going to heal. He's yeah. gonna heal. Oh, I, I'm just hearing a slew of words, but you guys go. <laughs> so the scripture says, after the meal, he took the bread. There was a lot of bread on the table. But I want to remind you, the bread that he took was the middle sheet that was removed, broken, wrapped in a white linen cloth, and hidden away. And it comes back at the end of the meal. It has a new name, Afikomen, I will come again. And our Bible says after the meal, in this order, he took the bread, not any bread. He took the bread that was wrapped, buried, hidden away. He unwrapped it. He took the bread and he said, this bread, this is my body. The one that was removed, it's pierced, it's bruised. It's striped. He said, this is my body. Wrapped, buried, hidden away. I will come again. This is my body, which I am giving for you. And so do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the bread. And he broke it, and he gave it to his friends, <sighs> gave it to his friends. And he said, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You are the king of the universe. 
and you bring forth bread from the earth. And he said, eat of me and be every wise whole. Lord, for your body, mm -hmm. we receive now all of your bruises, all of your pain carried for us. And taking this, we are made Whole, yes. a friend of God. Mm. Receive the body of the King given for you. I see the life of God permeating. Lord, we thank you for the bread of life. We thank you for your life, your life that's permeating every soul, every body right now. Lord, we thank you for wholeness in every we're one. We are your people. I thank you for wholeness in your people, Lord, in your family. Mm -hmm. You're whole. You're healed. We're a healed people, a whole people. And Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us for the remission of sins, Lord, we thank you that one day that we will drink this with you in your kingdom anew. Lord, one day we will show up to your table, your heavenly table. And Lord, until that time we proclaim your death, until you come, we announce to the principalities and powers of the air in the kingdom of darkness that their kingdom is coming to an end and your mm -hmm. kingdom, Lord, mm -hmm. is coming. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Messiah. We proclaim your death until you come. And we drink this cup, Lord, and as we do, by your stripes we're healed, mm -hmm. whole, forgiven, and cleansed. Thank you, Lord. The third cup, the cup of redemption. Everything according to plan. Everything according to plan. And someone, someone has just been healed of ulcers. Ulcers, painful ulcers in your stomach with taking this covenant. And uh, there's a, a woman who has been tortured by with stress in your home that's come from your husband caused great turmoil in you. And that, that band that Sid saw, I saw that around. So at times it's almost impossible for you to even take a breath and breathe. And, and the Lord just cut those bands with his pierced hand that his sacrifice purchased for you a peaceful place, a place of shalom and rest. And that stress and that is, has been broken off of you. Those, those words of, of covenant breaking and cursing have been cut off from yeah. you because this meal sets you apart to the table of the king and he is working in your home and if you'll do what he shows you to do and create a place for him there 
He will come. We've had testimony after testimony of husbands repenting in front of the kids to their wives and teenage children mm -hmm. repenting to their parents at the table. Please forgive me. And fathers, re this, this table, this is where it all begins. This place of covenant, this is where it all happens, where he separates us for himself, where the covenant is made and where it is enforced. And those things that we give to him, he keeps unto that day. As we give ourselves completely to him, he is able to keep us until that day. And he defends yeah. what belongs to him. Yeah. You don't have to be your own defense. He will defend what belongs to him. And you're going to hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah in your home, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your children's rooms. And you're going to see heaven has just released angels on assignment. Psalm 20, David prays, is, may he send you help from the sanctuary. You have just opened the covenant door of help from heaven. You're going to see, what was that? What Did I just... No, no, yeah. angels on assignment. Nothing weird, nothing strange. It's just they are active now on your behalf. They are come on the command of the king to watch over you and to keep you, to protect you, to shield you, to bring information that you need in a timely way. No longer back there smelling the same old dead air. Out front where we belong, leading the way, being bold, with that which we know, that which I am not ashamed of the gospel, the Apostle Paul said. I am not ashamed of the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the name of Yeshua. He gave it all for me so that I could be all that he's made me to be. I'm not ashamed and I'm not afraid. And yes, some days I have to remind myself of that, but every Shabbat when we take this, Lord, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of you, and I am not afraid. Yeah. And we open up our homes, and our neighbors now know that we serve a different government, that we love a king. We serve one who is apart, who is separate, who is different from us, but is present with us, and he is able to keep us until that day. He defends what belongs to him. Your, Thank you, Lord. Sid, Sid's word on the, the perm, how people are going to be delivered. Yes. Delivered. So Passover, God said, well, or, or, or on, right. on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, remember, it was I, the Lord, who delivered you out of Egypt with an outstretched arm and mm -hmm. mighty acts of judgment. Mm -hmm. Jesus' outstretched arm, God judged him for our sins, the blood of Jesus cleanses you and delivers you. You're, de you're like this, this is the deliverance. This is the wholeness that Sid was talking about. But not only that, it's the, it's the hedge. It's the, it's the protection. Remember the blood over the doors at Passover. Right. And not only are you delivered, but now God is the guardian. He, remember, he's the guardian of your sacred space, your temple and your home. He watches over mm -hmm your house. Right. There is nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. If, if the, the, the blood of Jesus, Father, I pray for a revelation of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Lord, that, that the blood of Jesus, as, as Sid declared today on this Purim feast, Lord, yes. the blood of Jesus yes. saves, redeems, and delivers us. Yes. You Thank have you. delivered us with yes. an outstretched yes. arm. And now we are your people, and you are putting your hedge. Yes, you are putting your protection. Hallelujah. You are guarding over and watching over us mm. because we're not going to we're not going to fall back into brokenness, but we're going to mm. move forward as a people in wholeness and deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. You know. Amen. I, I believe that God's not finished yet with us. 
I believe that God's not finished with your family. I believe that God's not finished with your ministry. I believe that God's not finished with your finances. Amen. I believe the best is ahead of you. Oh, yeah. Stop looking back. And I'm going to ask Paul to sing Adonai. What, to explain this song before you sing it. Mm. Um, the, the Hebrew word Adonai, <clears throat> you all know, is translated as Lord in our Bibles. But what we may not understand is that word Adonai in the Hebrew means you own it all. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. The Apostle Paul said, I don't even own myself. I have been purchased Amen. with a price. So as we declare, you are Adonai, we say, it all belongs to you. Have your way, Lord of eternity. It's, many of you probably know this when we redid it in Jerusalem, but it's now taken on another whole Hallelujah. dimension and we can uh, enjoy this. Paul, together. would you go to the music set, and as you get set up, I, I, I just want to point out to you, we Messianic Jews, we got the tradition of traditional Judaism, then we later, layered it with the tradition of Christianity, and we Jews are famous for tradition. We got double tradition now. But what happens when you take these pat biblical patterns yes, and present it through revelation. You've just had a demonstration amen. of revelation amen. rather than knowledge. Amen. I mean, it's like if God's not behind it, I don't want it. So good. Amen. Paul Wilbur and Adonai. Come on, you know this one, stay to your feet with me. Lord, I'm turning, mystery behind the veil. Lord of heaven and God of Israel. and power, clothed in your honor and strength, Lord, hear the cry of our hearts, come on, conquering King, oh yes, and every eye will see your glory. Lord over all the earth, you are Lord over all the earth. 
Come on, sing it to the throne. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Amen. Sing it again. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord is the Lord.